what's up guys welcome to another code solutions i don't know what to call this this is a project anyways i am um, as usual we are going to be trying to keep this one as simple and make it as fast as possible so we'll be looking at how do you create um or roughly navigate from one fragment activity to another frag um, fragment activity and we'll be using um the jetpack one of the jetpack components which is the navigational component all right so pretty much what we really want to do is to have a button within our fragment that navigates to another fragment there are numerous ways to do it but this is the one that works for me and this is the one that i think um is one of the simpler ways to get it done if you don't agree you can always um comment in the comment section and tell me what you think um could be done better and the, the aim of it is to really make it as simple as possible all right so let's get to it all right so this is an empty activity we're starting here you can call this anything you want i will call this nav Mm, nav navgo what the hell navgo all right cool and we're using kotlin so click finish and let it build out your application all right so i'm clicking um finished and it's now building out my application and the aim of this really is to have a button which is on or in your fragment i should say in your fragment that navigates to your next fragment all right and this is done without without the activity getting involved which is the parent activity so what we really just be using is just our um fragment button to navigate to our fragment button and this button is as i said before inside the fragment itself all right so it's building out all right uh, okay so pretty much it's now syncing don't worry about my errors here it's just my slow internet so it takes a while to sync so pretty much what you will need first is to create a fragment in your main activity and then we're going to create a nav graph because remember we're using our um we're using our um our jetpack component all right so let me close my previous um project which is a lot similar to what we're going to be actually doing here all right so we're done building out all right so first things first, what do we do now? We navigate to our res folder and click on it. And what we want is to create a nav resource file, which will be our nav graph. So, okay, new. All right, and there we go, Android resource file. All right, so you can name this whatever you want but in most cases everyone will name it nav underscore graph this is no special name or anything you could even name yours donut if that makes life better for you but i'm going to name it nav graph because that's what it is but this is the important part here where you need to change the resource type from values to navigation this part is the main thing this is what makes it work so you click and you make your sure your resource type is a navigation then click ok this can remain the source the same which is main and directory type is directory name is navigation whatever that that doesn't matter actually and click n you will automatically get this pop-up which looks like an error but it really isn't it's just telling you that you need to add your dependencies and it will add it for you so just ok and that's what you need so pretty much what will will happen is the android studio will go ahead and add these dependencies the, in order for you to see this beautiful looking nav graph all right so it starts the sync again so in the meantime you could actually go over to your main activity layout um which is your first layout here and but let's just let our nav graph come up first 
So once it's done correctly, you're going to see a nice interface like this one where you can create your destination. But let's create a holder for it in our main um, activity. So when I say a holder, I mean the space that gets because with fragments, what happens is there is a, a, um, a space in your activity that gets swapped out which would be called your nav host or your fragment host or whatever it is it gets swapped swapped out with different fragments so let's delete this text view because it makes no sense to be here and let's put in what we'll call a nav host so that's it nav host fragment it's it literally there and it's already named nav host fragment so you just throw it anywhere you want and it automatically does something it picks up your navigational graph so just say okay all right all right so we're using a constraint layout here so it needs to get the dimensions in order to know where it should be at runtime so i'm just going to just make my constraints here and you could do this um, programmatically as well, but this is a simple way to do it. All right, so pretty much this is where my host is. All right, and I'm you can the ID is originally fragment. I don't think that's a sensible ID, so I'm calling mine host, so I'll know it differently from everything else around it. You see this red line here? Ignore it. It's not a big deal. To be honest with you. Now let's jump back to this navigational folder and our nav graph. So remember the, the, the graph that we created. Now let's put it to use. So first things first, let's create some destination. So for the purposes of this um, tutorial, I'm just going to create two destinations. Um, I don't need none of these call map methods, but what I do need is this layout file. So I let it create the layout. And I don't want to call it blank fragment I'll call it one so one and start or finish I should say and so this would be our first destination this gets shown automatically and that is something that you don't need much to do so let's just create our next um, destination which would be and I'm gonna call this two this is no special name um, so it's T-W-O that's how two is spelled yes that's how it's spelled all right and and let's just click i don't need these callbacks either all right and let's click finish on this one okay so let's go back now you should actually see two fragments here okay so the first fragment now, pretty much what we want is whenever someone clicks this button, a button that we are going to put in fragment one, it will bring them to fragment two. So you see this little circle, this is pretty much your, um, your destination. Uh, um pretty much the way it's going so where you, what you can see is it will be navigating from one to two so there that little curly line goes there and if there was three it would be this curly line going to somewhere else so pretty much this is showing the flow or the direction or the action that is taken to get to where it needs to go all right so for my for my issues now i like to go into my fragment so i double click on it and here we go and what I like to do in most cases to change, especially for this tutorial, to change the color of my fragment so you'll know which one's which. So I'm starting off with my first fragment, which is one, being green. So let me go to fragment number two and let's make it another color. Because if it's white, you white doesn't work. Um, well, white does work, but I'm just saying for the purposes of this tutorial, it you wouldn't know that you even clicked on it. And let's just use purple here. So these are two major colors that you can you you once you see them you'll know where you are. All right. So let's go back to our main activity and let's look what goes on there. So let's look at our main activity layout file. All right. So this is our main activity layout file. It's already picked up fragment one, so we know that fragment one is going to be immediately shown. All right. So let's go back to fragment one and let us create our button. 
all right so right now it's a frame layout so let's change this frame convert this frame layout to a constraint layout blah 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 that's just some thing telling you that it's gonna flatten the view um, hierarchy and whatnot let's get rid of this text view because we don't need it right now and let's drag a button inside there so let's let this button be the center of life okay so I'm just constraining my button here okay come on button be constrained okay and uh, let's just let this b button be a little bit bigger so we could see it okay and let's constrain it some more that it doesn't go floating off the page okay and I'm gonna call my button but one okay I always seem to call my buttons but one all right so we now have our button we now have our in our nav graph the direction that we want our um, actions to take and you see the colors okay cool so let's get to the the, the fun part of the code all right so we are going to be going right into the 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 Kotlin file for the first activity and what we see right here we have our fragment it, it extends the fragment and why not and let's un, um, extend uh, um, on click listener as well so to extend a on click listener you just put comma and on click on click listener okay there we go so pretty much just choose the first one okay so we now have an unclick listener. All right, so immediately we notice that we need to override a few stuff. All right, so let's see what they are asking us to do. Let's implement members, which would be to un implement the unclicked um, function, obviously. So there we go. But for this one, so pretty much this unclicked, this unclick, um, function what it will do is whatever we click on it will do that all right so we have done that we've included our on click listener in our fragment so let's just call some some um call some elements or views that we are going to need so one of them we'll need is a nav controller so let me just say i'm going to call it var nav C and pretty much that's a nav controller. Whoa, okay. Nav controller, and let's just make it null for now. All right, so you're getting a red line, so just put make sure you put your question sign here, okay, and that takes care of that. Okay, so let us let us create an um, override a next method which was definitely necessary and that's a call on created view on create view that is on create view okay on on view created oh my god okay so it's actually on view created not on created view okay all right there we go so let's now bring in our nav controller that we just referenced here equals navigation dot find nav controller and when it asks us what nav controller, let's tell them the view. Yep, that's the one that we want, the nav controller for the view. And that satisfied that. Now, let us hook up our button. So let's just call our button. Let's call it mm, var but equals find view by ID. Okay, let's just find a view by the ID anyway. So let's just reference it directly then. But dot
and it's a button and what we're really going to be passing into this button is the reference of this thing that but one okay let's make a button outside of here because uh, I'm not liking this one let's make reference a button outside Just pass it in all right action and it's action one to two all right so it just needs a little question sign here and pretty much that's what we what we need so let's see it in operation so all right so I'm gonna pa pause I'll give a minute while I get my my um, emulator fired up All right, so we're getting ready to run, but oh, let me just, there's one correction. This should not be this button that we reference up here. In fact, we don't need to even reference this button. What we really should actually have here is view, view. Pretty much that's the view. The button will be cast into this view. So pretty much that's what we put this on click on. If you have the button here, then it won't work. So it should be view dot find view by ID, which is a button or that ID, which is the button. And then you set the on click listener on that view. And that's how it will work. And pretty much that's it for it. So let's check it out now. So this is it. Let's click on it. Don't laugh at my emulator. I know it's small, but I'm actually using a Surface Pro 3 to use it, so it won't be able to put out that magnificent large um, emulator. Anyways, let's just see our proof of concept. Let's click on this button. There we go. Brings us to our next fragment. And it's as simple as that. So pretty much that's it. I hope this has been simple. So and easy to follow so what you really need here as i said before is our view and remember we use our nav graph here just recapping to get that action from here to here so pretty much that's it guys um hope this video has been fun and i hope it has been not as confusing as some persons have it out to be so that's how you use a button within a fragment to navigate to a next fragment. Okay, guys, um, thanks for watching. If you really like these videos, please subscribe. Um, um, there was a subscriber the other day that told me that I need to put out more videos. So, all right, this is, this is for you, man. I'm actually putting out more video, videos. Um, hope you like it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe and please comment and tell me your, your, um, if there's a better way out there to do this. Um, I do read every comment. Thank you.